All right. I think we're live. I hope we are. Yes, I think we are. All right. Hey guys, this is Dr. Sandy. It's so lovely to see you. Sorry, I was trying to contain myself. I'm so excited about tonight. I have Miss Savitria on with me tonight with St. Joseph's, and I'll let you finish the title. I'm going to find us on Facebook. Okay. So you are with, you represent your organization. St. Joseph's Medical Career Training Solutions. I am so excited to have you on tonight. I'm just, well, what I'm you. doing is I'm trying to, I'm not very inclined very well, but I have my, my thing on. So if somebody is going to want to ask a question, want to involve themselves in our discussion, I would love that. So this way we can really tackle, we have some great things we're going to talk about tonight. And I am just so honored to have you on. I want to tell the audience a little bit about you. Okay. Um, like you just, you're just inspiring to me. Um, on top of your travels everywhere and the beautiful sceneries that you take advantage of, like it's just so wonderful. So thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. You've been in the nursing profession for 31 years. Yes. With extensive experience. You're driven by yeah. nursing excellence. And yes. you are not only an NCLEX educator and adjunct nursing professor, but you are an entrepreneur and you are working yes. to build your brand with St. Yes. Joseph's Education Center. Medical Career Training Solutions. It's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it down on, my, on the thing here. Um, you are, in addition, you are also... You have served in the United States Army. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you for and, your support. And in the Army Corps of Nurses, I would actually like to find out some information about that for some of our nurses that are probably watching because I think they also okay. have a student forgiveness program too. Um, you received your undergraduate degree from Prince George's Community College of Nursing and her Master yes. of Science in Nursing from Walden University. We are a Walden alumni. Yes. Woo! Yeah. And <laughs> you are <laughs> currently working on your Doctor of Education from North yes. Central University with an expected date of completion in 2023. And then I can call you doctor. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some of your research interests are closing the knowledge practice gap a, uh, a month, newly graduated nurses, and the physical effect of grief due to child loss. Yes. You are a member of the American Nurses Association. Woo! Yay. <laughs> They're just now coming on board with what we're doing. And National League of Nursing, currently you are laying the foundation to open an allied health school in the District yes. of Columbia. And I am so super excited about that because I'm from the DC <laughs> area and I am so much looking forward to whenever I come there, I'm going to come over and I'm going to give you a big hug and I'm <laughs> support you because it is necessary. We have to be yes. absolutely supporting each other. I don't care what background you have. If you're a CNA, we support CNAs. We support right. everybody from literally you, you work with, I have your, um, your, um, program up here. I just got to find it. You know, I'm a little bit thumbs when it comes to this, but your, mm -hmm. um, sponsorship and you have you, the programs you offer are certified nursing assistant, phlebotomy technician, pharmacy, pharmacy technician, medical assistant, dialysis technician, EKG technician, patient care technician, home health aid and ultrasound technician. And you are working on way more than just that. Like this is just some of the pro programs that you offer, which is vital because these are the stepping stones for people that are looking into getting into the nursing profession. Exactly. So and we need to love them because there's a lot of nurses leaving. And that's something that we're going to also talk about. That's right. That's right. So let me You're just look exactly in here right. and see if there's any, um, anybody have any questions. So again, if you are not, if you're watching us, if you're not a part of the Nurses Against Violence support group and you are a healthcare worker, does that matter, matter which level that you feel that you're on? 
we support you. So please come in. You can you can actually join. It's uh, Nurses Against Violence, the support group. So Absolutely. I want you to tell, I want, okay, so this is your moment among okay. many, right? I All right. To talk about what motivated you, when did this start, and what what is your vision? Like, what is something that everyone could take away from what you're doing? Because as we all know, education is very important. It sure and also is. so is experience. So right. take it away. I want to hear more. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, in 2018, I um, started tutoring nurses um, to prepare for the NCLEX. I started uh, tutoring um, nursing students to prepare for NCLEX. That is um, something that I have um, actually went to Chicago and helped write items um, for the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. So I have great knowledge in it. I've helped so many students um, at, pass their NCLEX. I've even helped students pass their tests in, in, in nursing school. And I thought that I could make a greater impact um, you know, kind of enlarge my territory per se by uh, taking it a step further. I have taught nursing students, but I wanted to open my own allied health um, school. Um, and so I started working on it. Um, we're still plugging away at it. Um, right now we are, if I could give you where we are in the process, we are about to send our packet to the Higher Learning um, Education Commission in, in DC for, for approval to become a post-secondary school. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I am just driven. I am really driven yeah. by healthcare education. <clears throat> and um, it's just something that I, I want to do and leave a legacy um, for up and coming um, healthcare workers. Man, in I addition to that, I'm excited um, for you. Like this. Is <laughs> me too. I'm I'm super excited. Um, we are sponsoring or hosting our first um, annual fundraiser coming on November, November 18th. Um, it will be a virtual event. Let me know if I'm going too far ahead of you. <laughs> no, you're you're fine. You got the platform. Okay. I, I want to make sure because I know that there is an event coming up too that you have. Okay. <clears throat> you know that. Right. We were talking about so, November 18th. It will be a virtual event. It will be uh, it's entitled Global Health Revolution, a tipping point to close the healthcare shortage gap. Everybody knows uh, who's been in, in healthcare that uh, there's been a healthcare shortage for the longest time. Like I said, I've been a nurse for 31 years and staffing has always been an issue. Um, I mean, from the day I stepped foot on the unit back in 1990, it's always been always been a problem. Now, with the, um, the pandemic, we're in the clutches of this pandemic that just won't seem to let us go. We're seeing the top pop off of the pressure cooker. Um, yep. Nurses are leaving. Other allied healthcare workers are leaving. Uh, they're frustrated. They're tired. And so, what this event will do, it will provide a platform to discuss this issue. Um, we have invited panelists. Um, some of the panelists are nurse nurse leaders, such as yourself. Yay, nurse leaders. We have invited um, politicians. I, I guess I should call them government officials because they are the ones that have to hear, you know, what's going on and they have to help us. So we want them on this discussion as well. We've invited staffing agencies, uh, CEOs of staffing agencies, because they are the ones who are right now helping pull us out of this rut that we're in with providing more nurses. And so we have all of these individuals across the spectrum of healthcare who can discuss this. And I think that um, who better to discuss it than the people who are right out front trying to fight it. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know if anyone caught that, but they're going to have, we were invited. Yeah. So 
so we were invited to this event and all of these folks are going to be there. I see uh, Sophia, you, she's an LPN. She wanted to let us know that she was an LPN. So thank you very okay. much for being Thanks, on. Thanks, Sophia. Okay. There's lots of people on. There's a lot of people Great. on. So thank you very much for, for watching and stopping by. Um, yeah, so... And also you got another huge sponsor. We'll just leave that under wraps. We'll find that out okay. some other time. But okay. as far as like, I mean, congratulations on the hard work that you are doing. To, Thank you. you know, and sometimes you feel like, you know, like I've been doing this since 2017, like full on from my doctoral project, building education and, you know, and working on a solution as well as also building awareness and standing on desks and all the other fun stuff that people watch me and see what antics I'm up to. But it's important for us to get the word out that we have a problem, Houston, and it's time that we need to change this. Yes. Because if we don't, it's only going, it's going to trickle to our families. Right. Like it's, it's so bad. Like you, so you have the nurse and I was just talking to one of my friends earlier about this and Rachel Harvey, you guys will meet Rachel Harvey. She's amazing. Um, where we go through, like most of us go to work and we lose ourselves in the service of others. Right. So my Angelo has talked to us about, right. right. And then we, we go and we work to sometimes leave the other stuff behind and we get to, and we get to work. And then what do we get? We get more, we get more. And it's right. almost like a domestic violence situation that we cannot escape. And it's continued over into the floors, right? right? So we can either absorb it, which a lot of us have done. You absorb it or, and, or you can fix it. Right. And then when we don't fix it, including ourselves, it can lead to violence on the floor because mm -hmm. it can be not only through incivility actions and I'm not calling if anyone sits there and says that I'm saying that we're the blame for everything and getting punched in the face. Absolutely not. No. But we can help. We can, because we cannot control what other people do, but we can control ourselves and we can lead by example for the upcoming and we can do better for ourselves. A lot of people aren't doing coping mechanisms. A lot of people are not, their coping mechanisms are going home and drinking a drink. Right. Right. Not of water either. And <laughs> yes. we have to face the problem, right? We were not right. taught mental health, quality mental health education. We were not taught addiction education. We were not taught how to work with difficult people. And these are the things that I work on. You have like this amazing thing. And I love the front of your, um, your sponsorship. And I know that nobody can see this, but it's a cartoon. And you can explain the cartoon if you could, please, because actually, let me, um, okay. I can, I can probably share my screen real quick. Yep. You can share your screen. Actually, let me just do just that. Okay. So why don't you explain this cartoon? Hopefully okay. everybody can see this. So what you have here, what you have here is, uh, what looks like a cliff, two cliffs. You have uh, healthcare workers on one side, right? And you have sick individuals on the other. And there's a chasm in between, okay? Notice that on the left, they're, they're numbered to just three, which represents the dwindling uh, amount of healthcare workers that we have now. And on the other side, you see a plethora of sick individuals. And this represents what we have now and what we're going to have in the near future. We have a, a huge population of aging individuals who need healthcare. I think it's the CDC that has predicted that in the year 2025, we will need here in the United States, in excess of a billion healthcare workers, and we already and we're having so many people are leaving the floor. You yes. Know? Now, what about mental health care? Right. So that's something that I'm working on. I have. So I'm finally going to take boards at some point here within the next like two <laughs> to three weeks. Knock on wood. Hold on. I graduated in May. <laughs> big issue 
with my stuff. You can do so, it. <laughs> oh, I could do it. That's for sure. The problem is, is that, you know, I have, I have nursing on my mind. What I am understand. I, what am I going to do? Right. What am I going right. to do to help our profession from this? I mean, it's like reinventing myself on top of, because right. I grown up in the field, you know, now I'm going to do mm -hmm. this nurse practitioner thing. So what do I do with trying to help our profession? So that's, that's right. my next phase. And it involves nurses, nurses against violence. It really, truly does. And I, I can't wait to be able to share that with everyone. I mean, it's, it's very, when it comes to your cartoon or the, the, mm -hmm. the you know, the, I call it a cartoon. Um, <laughs> it is a cartoon. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was very uh, poetic. I think yeah. it's, I think it's wonderful. Like, yeah. you know, because, well, it's not wonderful with the meaning because it's like, right. you're trying to do so much like learned helplessness. You're, you can't, you, mm -hmm. there's no way you could even help anybody because you can't even, you can't even give them what they need. Exactly. Exactly. And that's does right. It, is it all just staffing? No, there's a reason behind the staffing. And I think that's wonderful that you're having this kind of event um, because it's needed. It's very much needed. And, you know, and I applaud you for taking that um, leap to really push to do that. And you're going to be very successful. Um, oh, thank it, you. I'm very, thank very you, excited you, you. about what you're doing. Um, and, and you know what else, Sandy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when, I, when I think about um, the, the platform that I'm, I'm about to um, present, and when I think about your platform, they actually, they, they cross paths because, um, a healthcare worker who has to work um, without uh, the proper equipment, who has to work without <clears throat> proper staffing, not, not enough. In my mind, that, that's a form of mental violence or mental oh, yeah. um, anguish, mm -hmm. and it needs to be addressed. It's sort of like holding your hands shackled yes. and saying, yes. okay, so now go do your job. Right. You must turn everybody. Everybody must be turned to two hours and yes. good luck. Yes. You have 30 patients. Have fun. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so I thank you yeah. for collaborating with me as well. <laughs> you are absolutely welcome. And, you know, and, and we're going to be doing way more like there, this is just the beginning guys. Like we've, I've got Makiba. I don't know if you've met Makiba or seen, um, she's with scrub life for uh, scrubs life forever. Are you familiar with Makiba? I've, we, we're friends on, on Facebook, so I've seen her uh, in, in passing and scrolling through my thread. Yes. Okay, I, great. I love Outstanding. Her. Yeah, you got to pay attention to what she's doing. She's, she's all about, so we have a little bit of a different theme, but we all have the same theme. It's all underlying. Mine is, okay, so I want to be like, I'm going to throw this out there and we'll see what sticks, right? I want right. to be the protector of nurses and frontline healthcare staff, where they should be able to come to me along with all of the mental wellness coaches that I'm going to be bringing on to be able to talk about their issues as a third party provider. And their employer doesn't have to know unless you're a safety to yourself, they would have to subpoena us to find out any kind of information you would know way ahead, mm -hmm. but as a protect all nurses and frontline healthcare workers, we would be completely separated. Their insurance, they don't even have to pay with insurance. So this way, nobody has to know what is going on. And if you're not feeling okay, you can come and talk to us. That is my goal. I want to be an independent awesome. mental health provider with Recover Me. And I'm serious. Yeah. I am doing this. I'm already in the process of working on an EMR. Makiba's aware. She, she's probably going to be like, I can't believe she said that. But yes, <laughs> probably watching and be like, I can't believe she said that. Um, but this is what it does. Goals don't happen overnight. Right. When we say things, I, whenever I say something, it's going to happen. It just might not be overnight. But I promise you, Things are going to really, really start happening because hopefully we get, we have some big players that are going to also come on as well as yourself 
that are going to help us really mend and and give nursing and all frontline healthcare workers a huge hug and with love and exception because we love you where you are. It's extremely important. Right. Also, mm -hmm. safety. Trying to keep nurses and frontline healthcare workers from being safe. From being like targeted. Right. Targeted, safe, and feel like they're well, you know, they're welcome, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we we have we're not condemning like any kind of administration, anything like that. We're pointing out a problem and they need to listen and let's be proactive and let's fix the problem. It's gonna sting, it's gonna hurt, but the truth hurts and we need to talk about it. Because if we don't talk yes, about do. it, your bottom line, not that our nursing profession or anybody is on, on the bottom, but that's what they call it. Your foundation is crumbling. It has cracks in it and you're losing people. That's and when right. you lose people, you're losing right. money. And when you lose money, mm -hmm. th that money goes away from the services that you're providing to your patients or supposed right. to be providing because you're too busy trying to hire and fire people or micromanage them. How about we, we work on the solution instead of having constant, you know, talking about it or even how, if Mr. Smith punches you in the face, are you reporting things? Are you not reporting it and letting them get away with it? I don't care if they have right. Alzheimer's. I don't care what they have. If it's not reported, right. what is it? Right. If it's, if it's not reported, it's it's nothing. Never right. happened. So it's all in your right. head. Just even an, though an your jaw nurse. is like broken, right. you can't even, you know? Mm -hmm. We, If you see it, agreement. if it's happening, you have to report it because there's no data and the data that they are getting is going in the trash. It's going into the trash. I followed it. I followed it. There's not, they don't talk about it. It is not even like they, they have it off the wayside. It is mandatorily, be, it's supposed to be mandatorily reported every time an assault happens on the floor. In 2018, Right before the pandemic, 62% of nurses from the American Nurses Association, I was on the very first in nurse abuse panel and I was raising these red flags since then, since, two, since 2017. And when I was on that panel, it was a dream come true because what I was finding, I was reporting, nobody listened and that's okay. They're listening now. And now they're coming around with the mentoring program. Hey, how are you doing? I know you're having a hard time. Guess what? You're late. You're late. Right. That's right. Now help me fix this problem and stop being after the fact. The problem is now we need to fix it now. Right. Yes. Now is the time. So <laughs> I brought, I know I'm like, no, oh, I'm fire. <laughs> so what I want to bring up is something that Michael Bulger posted and I allowed it to go through. I don't allow really anything to ever go through. He's, I think, um, you're welcome, Linda. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Sophia. Um, they're saying thank you very much for everything that we do and, and you know, for thank you for all of, for all of us. That's so sweet. I just, I yeah. Just <laughs> and I'm starting to see the culture changing over in nurses, uh, nurses with cards too. Like I, I complimented them because I'm loving how they're keeping the incivility out. People are hang, angry. They're upset. They're hurt they're in pain. Yes. Right. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying people are mental. I'm saying it can weigh on you. Right. Where yes, it can you get that and you release it. You feel so much better and it's always a work in progress. It's never overnight. So right. Michael posted something in our group and I wanted to make sure that I went over this because it was even reported as being like, shouldn't be in the page. Right. And I appreciate people who report things and I, and I reach out and the, Hey, what's wrong. What can I help you understand? Right. Because I will not let something through unless I feel it's necessary. Right. Right. Okay. There's a group called the informed health choice, Missouri. IHCM. And if you look, it's one of the more recent posts and he probably posted like several pictures of the same one, but how how to advocate for a loved one and actually i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen okay 
Okay. I don't know if you can see me or not. Okay, so how to advocate for a loved one admitted to the hospital for COVID. Seven steps. Now, now take this. This is the context of this. This is like your family members in the hospital and you're like the family member and we all love the family, okay? So, but we have to talk about this because we need to talk about the legalities here, okay? Right. Seven steps. Get a hold of the charge nurse, only give 30 minutes to respond, very specific. Right, then right. go up to the chain of the uh, chain to administration, daytime chain of command is charge nurse, unit manager, director, and admins. Number two, also get the patient bill of rights. You can be the patient advocate also. Have the patient sign the medical directive with your name and whoever else that they want to advocate for them. Now, if they're not of sound mind, or they're in some sort of coma, they can't sign, you know, or, you know, if they're going through delirium there, that's not legal, right? Um, number three, after charge nurse, go to manager and state that you're not happy with care. I'm hearing people say Karen in my head for some reason. Um, being medically neglected, need someone to call back, call me back in 60 minutes threaten that you or a family member will be in a be a big problem if this neglect does not be get remedied immediately no case manager specific they have no real power number four hospitals are supposed to provide a patient advocate which is supposed to be for the patient and if they realize that you are aren't getting care and threatening going up the chain most likely they will take positive action number five if you can find the right to a life lawyer that would be immensely helpful number six also if they aren't allowing a visitor you or a family member should claim medical kidnap sometimes these trigger words force appropriate care Number seven, record everyone's full name that you speak with at the very bottom. And I hope everybody's listening. This is for informational purposes only. This should not be regarded as legal or medical advice. Okay. So I would like you guys to respond to Michael because I think that he would really appreciate that. But here is where it's at. Okay. You ready? I know you're going to back me up with this. Absolutely. At the bottom underneath. I'm sorry. You're right. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the bottom, underneath of this post, I, I specifically said, have a timeline. If you do not know how to do a timeline, I will specifically go over how to do a timeline probably later this week. Do a timeline of the events that are happening. If you know how to chart, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know how to chart, then and you, and you think you know how to chart, then we're going to talk about it again, right? So you're going to do date, time, and you're going to do everything in parentheses that they say that's subjective and then you're going to make sure that everything that you say is documented okay very important what they say if they're saying any of this crap if they're claiming medical kidnap and there's no there's no and then they're going to try to pull you into court you need to make sure that you have witnesses and if you can change your assignment I know this is going to not rub anyone the right way, but if you could change your assignment with somebody else that they might like, you know, they might be like, you know, they'll laugh with somebody else, but they don't like how you are play. I call a good guy, bad guy. Some people know it as good cop, bad guy, a uh, good cop, bad cop. Right. But we're not going to say that because we like all cops. Right. Except for the bad ones. That's right. <laughs> and, <laughs> So, but there's also bad nurses too. There's good nurses and there's bad nurses. There's yeah, good CNAs, there's bad CNAs. I'm not gonna, hey, you know what? There's not a lot of nurses out there that, you know, there's some there's some bad ones out there. Um, but again, we meet everybody where they're at and maybe try to help them, right? So let me get back to the point. Make sure you have a witness. If you can't change your assignment with the charge nurse, see if the charge nurse will take on that patient or somebody that that patient would probably, or maybe somebody might not be as um, like me, like give them to me. Like I wouldn't care because they would know I'm boundary setting. Right. <laughs> I'm coming in there. You're getting, this is the way it is. All right, here's That's your right. call though. You need me? I'll be right outside the door. Right. You want something to eat? You want something to drink? 
Mm -hmm. It always works. Exactly. If you can yep. eat or drink. Um, so it's very important if you, if you don't feel and, and you're not incompetent, you're, you know, you're okay. If you, if you can't work with people that are angry. Okay. That's another class. That's a class I'm actually putting together. It's how to work with difficult people. And mm -hmm. we all may think we know how to work with difficult people, but in the education, it's not, it's not there. Right. There's no addiction training. There's no Karen training. There's no, there's nothing. Right. So yep. that's important. You were going to say something. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> and and that, that, okay, that post, that, that information from that, um, that individual, it, it has such a negative connotation. Yes. It, if I pick that up as a, as a nurse and I pick that up and I read that I, it, and I didn't have the knowledge that I have, it would make me very leery about caring for it? anyone, you know? Right. Um, and it's also, it's like, um, bullying, bullying yeah. nurses. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a lot of that because there's a lot of pain out there. And mm -hmm. if you look at this, there's, a, there's some, uh, you know, you could just tell right here. Um, there was, hold on. they're using like, um, I forgot the right thing. You know, when you blend two words, like aren't, and you know, they're not, it's not a professionally written Thing. And if you look, how are they standing? I don't know if you could see this, right. out, but how are they yes. standing? Like they're automatically having them on defense. Right. You know, when you have, when you have a negative patient or you have a mm -hmm. negative situation, always have an open arms, open arms like this, like, okay, I right. have my arms like this and then just have them at your side. Or you can, you know, touch your hands together like, like this or something like that. Not like, or or, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of people and they, right. they stand weird. You know what I mean? Like, what do you got to say? I don't want to, this, this, this. no, 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 no. <laughs> because what's going to end up happening, you're going to escalate it and you're not going to realize it with your body language. So right. the other, the other thing too, is I see a lot of this and this is such an infection control thing. And it just, it, it might, if I have any students on, they're going to laugh at me. They're going to laugh. I'm telling you right now, they're going to laugh. You ready? You ready? So Mrs. Smith. Uh, yes. Mrs. Smith, how are you? Okay. Well, yeah. Let me, let me, okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's what happens, right? I have a yeah, guy yeah. that um, is talking to me about the lanyard or the, um, the, the string things. They can also, they can also use those to choke you too. So yeah. you really got to be very careful of what you have around your neck. You got to be very careful on a lot of safety things that can come back and hurt you. And I, the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this nonsense from this paper is that we're working with, and I love marketing, okay? We're working with people. The general public has a fifth grade, like I like education, like they believe everything they see on TV, everything and fake news. I don't care. I'm not. I, okay. Listen, I'm not going politics. <laughs> I'm just saying this because there's a lot of people that go into the news and things can be fabricated on the news. This is before what's his face. Okay. This mm -hmm. is sensationalism what it what sells sex drugs and alcohol or sex drugs and what was the other one rock and roll mm -hmm. well it's more than that now it's like like let's see how bad you can be right or let's just make some stuff up right right so it's all a lot of sensationalism that's in is in the mass news if you could turn your tv off great but i'm going to tell you when it comes to this kind of thing this is what the general public is looking at that's not educated that's not you know they don't understand they don't know okay and i'm not saying anything's wrong with them i'm saying they just don't know what they know what they don't know okay right and we have to love them where they're at if they don't know we need to give them their patient. what would what would happen if they say i want to say see my patient bill of rights okay there you go you know not throw it at them but be like here you go right here you go yeah. Mrs. Beth. you know like that's what they're, they're waiting for you to say, no, 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 no. Like they're, you know, I don't want to give that to you. No, that's what they're waiting for. 
If you give them the things that they need, what are they going to complain about? That's right. What are they going to complain about? You're not going to save somebody from being an addict with three days if they're admitted. You need to get a protocol to help them withdraw. If you're seeing agitation, it might be withdrawals. It might be. This person that got COVID, they might've been a chronic drinker or a functional alcoholic. Are you looking for signs and symptoms of right. like, you know? So we mm -hmm. have to be very understanding. It's hard to, when you're in pain yourself, and this is why it's so important, guys, you've got to take a break. If you're leaving nursing altogether, please come back because we're going to make it better. It's going to take more than just us. Take a break, come back, go at it again, and just keep working because you need a job. Not only that, but you got to love it. If you don't That's love right. it, then you need to take your break. But please don't discount it because it's a wonderful, wonderful career as much. I think, I think nursing is the most dis dysfunctional out there, but I think it's the most fun. Like, I think we are a bunch of people that just love with everything that we have. We're not all alike, but we have one thing in common. We have heart and we have passion. Actually, that's two. Yes, and then do. three, we have drive. I want you guys to remember how wonderful and special you are. Because if you're not, I'm going to remind you. <laughs> right. So what would you like? And I, in, in, so you have this conference that's coming up and you said it's going to be virtual and I would like yes. you to please reiterate what that conference is. Okay. All right. It is, uh, we have tagged it global health revolution, a tipping point to close the healthcare worker shortage gap. And what we've done, we have invited panelists from across the healthcare spectrum to include nurse leaders, uh, hospital CEOs, I think I left them out the first time I talked about it, uh, hospital CEOs, uh, government officials, and uh, staffing agencies. And we will um, be discussing um, this crisis that we're in and try to offer uh, and mitigate um, with solutions um, to this problem because it is affecting us now and it is going to affect us in the next five years if we don't do something about it very soon. Um, it will be broadcasted live uh, via Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We want everybody to see it, okay? Um, there is no, we're, we're not uh, uh, having you buy tickets or anything like that, but we would love the donations. Um, you can go to the website, uh, globalhealthrevolution.life, um, and, and place your donations there. And that's November, November 18th at 6.30 p.m. For the first 30 minutes of the, uh, of the event, uh, we will just be um, rolling different uh, sponsors' brands. Um, and then for 45 minutes to an hour is the big event where we, we will be uh, uh, tackling this huge elephant, right? We call him the elephant because we're going to tackle it little piece at a time. We're going to chip away at it. Um, and then we will ad adjourn the event. So we're looking forward to seeing all of you at, at this event. I am super <laughs> excited. I think it's going to be, actually, I know it's going to be, in, and we were talking about keywords. We don't want to think. We don't want to any of those little buffer words, we know <laughs> this is going to be a good, good event. And we are going to make sure that it happens and happen big. Yes. So is there anything that you would like to leave our wonderful community that's tuning in today and maybe even later on today, would you like to say anything special to them? Yes, I would uh, like to say that uh, those of us who are in healthcare, we we came into it for a reason, and I would like to encourage you um, to to stay the course. Okay, um, uh, we will get through this because right now we are very aware of it, and we're coming together to to make change. Absolutely, and. Yeah. 
my heart is with everybody out there. No, we're going to get through this. As yep. you were saying, the elephant in the room, you mm -hmm. can't bring it, you know, can't bring it down. You got to take it bite by bite. Things don't happen overnight, yes. guys. So right. we've got ourselves in a nasty mess. Let's get ourselves out. If you have somebody, mm -hmm. ask them how they're doing. Ask them how they're doing. Yes. Ask them if there's anything that they need and tell them they can always get a hold of me if they need to talk. I'm not charging them, which I'm probably going to get smacked on the hand for, but I don't want somebody to go into crisis. I will do what I have to do. Right. And I think everybody in our group feels the same way. If you feel that you need to talk to somebody, talk to them. And the best thing is, is that we can keep it anonymous with, with Nurses Against Violence. So I just want to let you yes. guys know, please join our group. Please tune into this awesome event coming up in November. And I just want to leave you with violence is not a part of the job. Document everything. And if you have questions, definitely post something in the group. I will let it go. I will let it go through. And if you want to post something anonymous, you can get a hold of me. And there's also an option inside of the support group. So thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody and have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me. You as well. Thank you. You're Good welcome. night. Good night.